Stay up there. Uh, I may have to unlock it after a few minutes. So okay, I can, I can do it. Yeah. So you lost the bed. Now, yeah. <laughs> that's what gambling. That's gambling. Now. Well, you know, Alabama. I lost to myself. Listen, we're from Alabama, so we don't have we don't have a lottery. We don't have anything else. We've got to get get it somehow. Right? Yeah. 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 Alabama. Yeah. 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 Uh -oh. They all have them. Okay. Okay, this family was from Alabama, and their daughter married an old boy from Georgia. And his name was Clarence. Okay. Okay, so she called she called her daddy and said Clarence was being pretty rough with her. Well, daddy and the two boys is coming to Georgia uh -huh. and take care of Clarence. Okay, they get to a bridge, you gotta cross over to get into Georgia, and he said. It said Clarence. It said Clarence. For the Clarence. <laughs> <laughs> Seven foot nine inches. And the old man looked out. He said, he turned around. He said, hell, I'm not messing with Clarence. <laughs> He's seven foot nine inches tall. I ain't going to mess with it. Now, that's, that's an Alabama joke. That, that is that's an Alabama joke. Yeah, we're not too smart, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some, some areas of Alabama are for sure like that. I've been wearing this hair long enough, too, so. Yeah. Especially with all this heat. Yeah, they said on the news this morning that Georgia had been getting a lot of rain recently. Oh, we have. We've got a lot of rain. Storm. We had. I, my wife told me one night, and I slept through that thing. She said we had thunder and lightning storms and wind blowing. And uh, I had a. I've got a walnut tree in my yard, not in the yard at the edge of it. Yeah. And one of the limbs on it, branches on it, had split off, you know, and all it was laying in, in the yard. But I, did, I told her, she said, did you hear that storm? I said, what storm? She said, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, she said, I uh, We had one and thought it. I said, I, I told her, I said, now I must have been tired. I got, I slept through that. There was a big tree down in somebody's yard. Was I saw it? the news this morning. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, we got a bunch of Bradford pears in our neighborhood, and those things will split and just, you know, run yeah. wind cones. Oh, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And yeah. Every, every house has, you know, at least one, mm -hmm. so. Oh, yeah. So one big storm, and you can mm -hmm. get to the neighborhood, and everybody's tree is down, so. My parents are, they live in Mississippi and they've got a lot of big pine trees. And those pine trees are bad. They get that fungus and die. Mm -hmm. And they're so tall that we got to get them cut down or they'll fall on the house. Mm -hmm. It's so. like you either pay thousands of dollars to get them cut down or you pay thousands of dollars to get them removed when they fall off and mm -hmm. all the damage it is. Mm -hmm. and the ones that are close enough to the house to fall on the house are the ones you got to worry about. Mm -hmm. I think that person's car got crushed this morning, but I was glad it wasn't their house. It could have been worse. Yeah, yeah, on the news. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've seen that it's on the news. Yeah. Boy, it, yeah, them cars are totaled. Did you see that? On, did you see that on news the other day where this woman she's driving down the highway? Now there's a wrecker in the lane she's in. There's a wrecker. I think I know what you're. Yeah, yeah. and she's on the cell phone talking, and and here, here's what saved her life. The guy had wreck. He had the car on the wrecker. Yeah. Okay, but he hadn't took the ramps down. They were still back there. Yeah. And she's on the phone talking, and she hears that thing. You send him off. Yeah, now. it's like Deuce she, of Hazard. She yeah. Went, <laughs> completely cleared the record. She completely cleared. And of course, when she hit the pavement on the other side, she kind of did this, you know. And it's a quarter of a mile down the road before she got to stop. That you know, was somewhere in Georgia, wasn't it? It was in yeah. Georgia. And she's going she's going to sue the man that had the record service because he didn't have any. Cones out or uh, yeah, anything. Well, you know, if I was a judge, I, well, he might not have had them up, but you shouldn't have been on that right there. That's you know, right. Driving. For real. Yeah. And she, yeah. Had, she wasn't hurt. It didn't hurt. The, it didn't even touch the record. It didn't yeah. even touch it. You had one come through here, didn't you? Yeah, about 12 years ago. I'm sure did. Uh -huh. You made a drive through barbershop, didn't you? Uh-huh. Yeah, the guy told me, he, he asked me if I'd give drive through service. I said, well, <laughs> I, was thinking about, I was thinking about it, but I decided not to do that. You know? <laughs> I wonder how good of a haircut that would be. <laughs> it wasn't there very good. And I had one guy come in here, of course, I've been cutting down for years. He's going on with me. He come in and started measuring it off, see if there's enough distance to park his car in here. And get out of wow. Yeah. Yeah. Two parking spots. How, how far in the building was he? He, well, he was in a 2000 model Honda and the whole car was in here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he, took, he took that wall and the door off. He took that. Oh my gosh. 
That's some damage. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a picture of it. That uh, that white. See the white. Uh, the binder, binder yeah. Binder. Yeah, look at it if you want to. We'll have to look at it. Here. Yeah, we will. Yeah, it's got, it's got pictures of it. Oh, he tore his place up. He's 87 years old. He's a retired airline, airline pilot. Uh, I've been, I guess I've been cutting his half probably for 20, 25 years. Bless his heart. Yeah. And what happened was when he pulled in, he, uh, see that's angle parking. He pulled in straight. Oh. Uh, and uh, he got out and looked at it. He, he knew he wasn't parked right. So he gets back in his car. And he put it back in. It's the same, very same way. See, he's 87 years old. Yeah. And uh, he's the very same way. And uh, so he gets back in and he does the same, the same thing. He does the same thing. So he tries it the third time. <laughs> you can't and, get uh, it in the first two. It just may not so be your first. Yeah, spot. first two didn't work. The third one, here's what happened. The third <laughs> one, he, he was coming in there. And what he did when he went for the brakes, his foot stepped off the brake, hit the accelerator. He just, just front wheel drive. He, he jumped the curb, and I had just called up. I was looking at the comic strips over in the paper, and I seen the boy. He wrapped the motor up, I guess, halfway. <laughs> and I thought, well, he'll stop and shoot. Next thing I know, he's crashing through the building. It's a miracle he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, didn't hit you. Yeah, but no, say, like, did you get hurt? Did you? The, the chair I was in, he jammed the first one, and every one of them jammed. I had a coke machine then, and uh -huh. it pushed it two foot over the floor. Dang. Wow. Yeah. yeah, that's that's kind of it. And, uh, I had a guy that he did the block work and the brick on the outside, and he told me, I knew him, and I was talking to him, he said, he said, this right here is what kept him going all the way through your barbershop. If that glass had gone all the way to the floor, he said he'd have went through Oh, uh, because there's barbershop. a barrier. Yeah, yeah he said, like he'd have gone through the back of it. Sure Dang, around. that's crazy. Yeah, it's a miracle you or him didn't get bad hurt. Yeah. That's, uh, I work at a property tax building, and, um, and they had to put those stanchions out front because I had somebody run through the front of the building too, so they, they but it tore, it was four to ceiling glass, so yeah. they had it tore it up pretty bad. Yeah. I don't think anybody got hurt, but yeah, well, I'm gonna cut the bulk out of this in my shares and then I put some stuff on and make you stand up and I'll give you a flat top with it. Okay, yeah, it's really long. It's gonna be a drastic change. You want to learn to quit that sports button? Maybe if this. I don't know, it feels kind of good with the heat, the way it's been. I'm hoping well, at least the rain brought some cooler weather. Did you, now did you get a haircut like this when you joined the service, Mr. Wayne? Oh my, yeah, the sides like this, the top of it left about that long. Yeah, it's called, it, well it's called high and tight, military high and tight. Mm -hmm. How long were you in the service? Two years. I got drafted during the Vietnam War. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your service, we well, appreciate thank you. you. For real. Yeah, I, got I went in, I was 19 years old. See, Lyndon Johnson was president. And Lyndon Johnson, he ordered draft call double. See, when they got me out, they was drafting 20,000 a month. What wow. wow. And that's how they got me at 19. And I, I, I took basically at Fort Gordon down here in Augusta. And uh, the company commander told us, they assembled us when we got there under a tent. There's 300 of us in the company. And he said, he said, if it wasn't for the Vietnam War, he said, you men wouldn't be here for another two years. But your commander in chief, Lyndon Johnson, ordered draft call double. And he said, they're drafting 20,000 a month building forces in Vietnam. And he said, all you men will be going there. Dang. And probably a lot of you won't be coming back alive. Golly. Did you go, did you get deployed to Vietnam? I did. I had been in there. I had been in there. Well, I got drafted in September '65. I was in Vietnam in January '66. Wow. So we got the train over. Yeah, I was deployed. Yeah. That's quick. There was 186,000 troops over there when I got there. What was it like over there? Hot. It, it was yeah. It was <laughs> hot. Lord have mercy. We we arrived in Saigon. And when I left California, it was 44 degrees. Now this is January '66. It was 44 degrees. I arrived in Saigon. She's over. We're in the dry season over there. See, it don't. It, it won't. It won't rain a drop of rain for six months. They have two seasons. It ain't like it is here. Yeah. And uh, it's in the dry season. And yeah, it was over 100. God, we got off that airplane. See, it was air conditioned. That heat hit you in the face. <laughs> I told old boy, I said, I won't survive this place. <laughs> you, you adapt to it. You're adapt to it. Yeah, so, yeah, you're adapt to it. About how how old are you? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, how old am I? Yeah, I'm 78. But so, so you're about my granddad's age then. So uh -huh. I I don't know. He might have been a little bit 
he might be a little bit too young to, to be drafted. I don't know how how old did you have to be to be drafted? Was it still eighteen or was Well it, you have you have to sign for the draft yeah. post office when you get eighteen. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And you can be drafted any time they need you. Yeah. Yeah. So they they ain't no you know, eight He he might have he might not have been old enough to be drafted. Uh, uh, he's uh, he I Well if he's, he's eighteen years old, I, you know, you have to sign up for the draft correct, 18. Yeah. When he reached 18 years old, he's old enough to be drafted if they need to. He, yeah, he might have been 16, 17 at the time, so he might yeah. have been just yeah. below the the, ma- the maximum. So my yeah. granddad was he was uh, in the service just in the Navy just after the Second World War, so in the late 40s. Uh huh. Um, so he was a little too young to be in the Second World War. Yeah. But my grandmother's brother was stationed in somewhere in France and went to Germany and he said I, when I was cleaning out I was a nosy kid you know I would look through like her drawers and stuff and she would fuss at me but I found uh, German marks where yeah. he had written letters back home on the money and mailed them back to his family oh, and so I was like Mama what is this and so she told me about his time over there mm-hmm. so. but he came back he made it back alive and everything he died young but anyway, it's a different time yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm still asleep this morning. You're hot. I'm still asleep. It is awful over there. Plus, this rain, I think, is just making me mm-hmm. tired. Ready for the sunshine. Not the 100 degrees, though. But Yeah, it's, this time of the year it's hot. It should start, yeah, after September, it should start cooling down a little bit. A lot of places that aren't used to it being hot are hot, and they don't have air conditioning like we do here in the south. So Yeah, New York and some of those upper states, they're like trying, they're probably discovering what air conditioner means. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so those are all your medals over there. I just saw that. That's mine. Those are awesome. Yeah, that's, that's, called, that's called the shadow box. That's what it's called. It's got my medal, my, that, me in the uniform. That's my basic training picture right there. Okay. okay. I'm in basic training. Yeah. So what all what all medals did you get? Well, I got uh, being served, served in Vietnam. I got a good conduct medal, a uh, uh, Vietnam campaign medal. Uh, let's see, there's four or five there. Uh, I'd have to go over and look and see what's over Oh, no worries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were stationed in California before you left? I, I was in California for about uh, three hours, you know, see. I got there three days. Okay. Processing what I was doing. And we, we were lucky. The ship had just left dock going to Southeast Asia three days prior to our arrival. Um, and we had to see our, our, our orders had six days to travel on. So, so I didn't I didn't have to report in till midnight on the sixth day. I mean six o'clock. So they called it eighteen hundred hours. Yeah. And I didn't have to report in till then. So I got out when I, I left Fort Knox. I took advanced training at Fort Knox. And when I left Fort Knox, I said, "Oh God, I'm going home for a week, you know, five days." So I did, and then I called early bird flight out of Atlanta going to San Francisco. So I had to see. I had the whole day to get there to report in. I was uh, I had up to 1800 hours, which is 6 o'clock, 6 p.m. for what I did. Yeah. I had it till there to report in, so I had the whole day before. I was going to ask, you, was it San Francisco? But yeah, because that, that makes sense. Cause yeah. So you did, you did advanced training at Fort Knox. Is that where you did, I basic, did. At basic training too? Or? No, I, that's advanced. It's called AIT, Advanced Individual Training. I trained to be a scout at Fort Knox, is what I did. Gotcha. Okay. And, uh, they said the average life of a scout in Vietnam was 35 days of race party. Oh my gosh. But I didn't have to do any scouting over that. Uh, General Westmoreland, he chose me in 19 more to go to Saigon to take training to be switchboard operator. He said there's a critical shortage in the Saigon area. So that's what kept me out of the jungle. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. 
And had it been for that, I'd been right there in the jungle with her. How long did you do that? Uh, what do you mean, Swiss Boy? Yeah. I did that rest of my tour over there for, I had I had been in country for probably about a month. Okay. Yeah. And well, the sergeant, when the sergeant called for formation, he told, he said, uh, he said, you men listen up, he said, I'm gonna tell you something. What, what's about to happen to you men is virtually impossible. He said, the Army's done spent hundreds of dollars training you for the job you're supposed to do in here. If a man with four stars on his car has the authority to change it. And he's sending you to Now, I don't know how I got selected. I don't have no idea. Just random got... selection, yeah. Yeah. So uh, we took a, job, a week of on job training. I was familiarized with the switchboard, and they, they placed us all around the Saigon area. And, uh, and I think it just goes to show that every job is vital, you know. It, oh, and, yeah. yeah. Whatever you is, do uh, is, is vital. Yeah. Was, every job is vital. Yeah. Every was, one of Fort Benning's, was it open when you were going through? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Fort Benning down here, Columbus, Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, Columbus is kind of, I mean, it's not in the middle of nowhere for, well, I, I mean, there are places in Alabama that are like that, too. So. Yeah, I had, I had a bunch of guys. I took basically a full tour in Augusta, and I had a bunch of guys that, Try to get to go airborne with them. See, airborne, air, being airborne pays you fifty five dollars more a month. It's called jump pay. And I, I had, well, come on, go. That's the airborne. That's another fifty five. I said, Uncle Sam can keep that fifty five. <laughs> I'm not jumping out of a good airplane. They say, <laughs> ain't, ain't all money good money. That's right. My pay, my pay when I went in, I was drafting September sixty five. My base pay was seventy eight dollars a month. That's what they paid us. And then they taxed it, put Social Security out on it. Dang. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> and I had a private to tell me the other day he graduated from basic in here, and he said that uh, he was, uh, now you get a choice, you can be paid once a month or twice a month. He, well, it's your choice. He said, my pay at the buck prime was 2300 a month. I said, my God, mine was 78. <laughs> <laughs> my, how times have changed. Yeah, how times have changed. Yeah, I think it's it's important we you know, I my great granddad, I lost him when he was probably about ten years ago. Yeah. And you know, I wasn't quite old enough to really growing up understand his stories from the war. Yeah. I'm and uh, he was in the Navy. That's something that I feel like I've I've lost is his stories and yeah. you know, his perspective on this. Because I did I mean, it's not that I didn't really care when I was younger, it's just the you know, I didn't really know the questions to ask or how to listen. Yeah, I know, so. I know what you're saying. So, uh, well, you hadn't been in the military, so you really didn't know what to ask. Exactly. So, or right. ask you about. You really didn't know. Now you look like you're going there. I'll put you a little more. I got a tip just a little bit right here on the side. All right. That's shaping up, ain't it? Yes, sir. You saluting. Yeah, wouldn't have it done. I'll have him lay back there and trim his beard off of him and give him a shave. Can you raise with the back and sides? This here? Yeah. Oh, I can raise her. Uh-huh. Sure can. Y'all live right here in Kent? Oh, uh, Alabama. Alabama. Yeah. Came to town for the Cubs. Oh, yeah, and, you told me. Cause I yeah. told you about the joke about right. Clarence, you know. Yeah. yeah. The, the bridge was said in Clarence, <laughs> not Clarence, you know. He said, the old man looked up right there and said, Clarence, seven foot two. Hell no. Spell is not our, it's our, about, not our forte. He realized that was about two foot taller than he was. Yeah, that's right. He said, I ain't messing with Clarence, you know. Look how tall he is, you know. Sign was saying clear us. <laughs> it's amazing. That's one of them Alabama jokes. People, nah, uh, people don't pay attention to those. They'll be driving the U-Hauls or something, and they think they they can get under there. And I've seen many a U-Haul with the top scraped off yeah. from those yeah. things. It wouldn't be high enough for them, yeah. Clear, I mean, the clearance wouldn't be high enough. <laughs> yeah. Or clearance, either one. Yeah.
Yeah, this is a nice little area though down here. I mean, they've done a lot of work recently on on the streets and sidewalks and oh, yeah, buildings. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's true. That's true. That's your house. Was that you as well? That one right there says Army Bound? Yes, sir, that's me. I was, uh, I was in 65. I was, I was 19 years old. <laughs> wow. Army Bound. That was just before you left for basic? Mm hmm Yeah, I went down, I went down for a physical in, uh, in May. April or May of 65, took the physical, of course they told me before I left, you know, I passed up and all. Physical and IQ tests and all that stuff, but they said we passed up. And they said, he, he told, the sergeant said, the Army will notify you when they, when they come down. So I got my draft notice in September. They got it in August, I got it in August, late August, the report, uh, September the 3rd, at least what it was, I had to report for, uh, it's a induction quick, into the armed forces. That's quick turnaround. Wow, yeah, it's fast. It was. What was branch fast. were you in? I was in the army. The army. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was army. Since you've had a haircut? Uh, January. January? Yes, oh, probably, you're, you're starving the barbers today. Yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> well, this is probably the longest I've had my hair ever. So. Well, I got a neighbor who got his cut here a while back, and here in Old Ray, he hadn't had a haircut since 93. Dang. He <laughs> yes. must have been down to his shoulders. And the reason he got one, three foot long. He, he, he had shingles. Oh, and he man. He told us that I've got shingles, and his hair. It was only what my arm is. Golly. He wore it on his tail. And he told me, he said, I got shingles on my scalp. And he said, they're terrifying me to death. Cut that stuff off. I said, Gooch is his nickname. I said, how, how short you want it, Gooch? He said, leave it less than a half inch, between a quarter and a half. So I did. I showed it to him. He said, I got that shit right there. I said, what I want. He said, you talking about a scalp hurting. My scalp is hurting. I was say, all that weight from the yeah, spear probably yeah, was there. Okay, yeah. And uh, I didn't say anything to him, but what he should have done was had me just, he, I mean, he had to cut it off, you know, just save it and give it to locks of blood, you know. And his hair, his hair was as long as your arm. Dang. Man. Yeah, he said, I ain't had a haircut in the barbershop since 93. Did he send it to locks of love? No, he didn't. No, yeah. he just don't trash can. <laughs> I guess his leg get rid. He said, "I've got to do something." He yeah. Said, yeah. He said, "My scalp is terrifying." Dang. Dead. I can't stand it. Wow. Shingles. I've never had them, but they say they're rough when oh, you, yeah. if you get them. Yeah. It's the I've same. Never had them either. The same thing from chicken pox, I think. Yeah. My, my granddad. I, 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 I go to the VA in Jasper. I'm, I've transferred up there, and I've had a. I've actually had two shingle jobs, and I'm in the computer, and I told the lady up there. Uh, I said, now I've already had a, had a shingle shot down at the uh, main hospital in Atlanta. He looked, and she did, she did look in the computer and said, yeah, and she told me how many years it been. But well, she said, that shot was only 20%, 26%. I said, well, the nurse that gave it to me said, you'll never have one. All she did was grin a little bit. She said, this one I'll give you today is 96%. That's you know? good. That I said, I said, I said, I said, she, she said, your arm's going to be a little bit sore, you know, before I give it to yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, she said that. She said this is 96% effective. I, I want to say my granddad got the shingle shot too, and he still wound up, I think, getting it a little bit, but not as severe as it could have been. But it yeah. can, I mean, it can kill you. It's, it's, 
It's oh, amazing. Yes, sir. It's yes, amazing sir. how much medicine changes and improves over the years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. I used to live in New Orleans and they had so many people die from yellow fever and those kinds of things back in the early 1900s, late 1800s. Mm -hmm. And I guess they just eradicated that disease. But I've heard polio is making a comeback. There's cases of polio in the country now. It's just something, it seems like just every, every few years, mm -hmm. you know. Because it was, it's, uh, like, it's like, they, you know, when they had it, when I was going to school and all they'd give you a polio, you know, shot and it eradicates it. And then it comes back around, you know, it seems like that, yeah. several years later. See, I've traveled so much internationally. I've had, even before COVID, I had, I've had a smorgasbord of different international shots. So yeah. yellow fever and yeah. take malaria pills and, and a, a bunch of stuff. So mm -hmm. I just, I'm a Heinz 57 of, of different medications so, and shots. Well, that, I think the scariest disease I've ever heard of is that Ebola. It will make you bleed from your eyes and your ears, and it, like, it just that's terrifying. I was in West Africa actually when Ebola broke out in twenty, was it fourteen, fifteen? Yeah, I was in West Africa when it started making a comeback. So, what I, kind of work do you do? Uh, I actually did geology work for a long time. Oh, so, yeah, okay. So I did like offshore um, oil research. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually do GIS now, so I do like mapping, uh, and, and we provide GIS services on mm -hmm. uh, computers. So, so yeah, I, I enjoy what I do. But I worked internationally for about two years, um, all over the world. So we had a research vessel that was like um, 200 miles offshore most times. And I did six weeks on, six weeks off. So mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of places. Oh, he'll put you some of that aftershave on there. It won't be sensitive anymore after that. No, thank you. <laughs> It'll wake you up. That shave definitely wake you up. Which I, I always put a little bit on there. That'd be fun. I, I tell you what, I had happened to me about. It's been about twenty years ago. This guy came in and he had now he had a tough coarse beard. He wanted me to give him a baby smooth shave. He said no. I told him, I said, well, I'll have to go. We call it going against the growth pattern or going against the grain of the hair, the way it grows, you know. So uh, I said, I'll have to go against that to give you a good shave. He said, well, do what you got to do. I want a baby smooth shave. Well, I this knew is what was going to well, happen. Yeah. yeah, I knew what was going to happen. So I got through shaving, boy, he took his hand, you know, all over. You couldn't mm -hmm. feel anything. He said, now, that's what I wanted. All right, I put that air shave lotion on. Like he he jumped out of a chair. <laughs> he went back there and got in front of the air conditioner. Stood there for a minute or two, and he turned around. I had two or three customers waiting. He's boys. I'm gonna tell you. He's in the I'll never be able to stand. That. That's what I'm Don't order what I Ch ordered. Change changes ways right so now. Yeah. Change his way now. Yeah. He said, "If hell's any hotter, I'll never be able to stand." It. I knew what it would cause the shading was close. I knew what it would do. Yeah. You didn't know you were saving souls, Mr. Wayne, did you? I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. All right. My skin is so sensitive. Yeah. It's, just, it's just, yeah. I, a little bit will go a long way for me. So. A little bit will go a long way. Yeah. Okay. I'll, <laughs> I'll apply it to you pretty light then. If that, I, I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I'll, I'll apply it pretty light. <laughs> I don't want you to jump out of the chair. Please, please no. <laughs> yeah, my my hair gets coarse too, so I have to be careful with it. I either, if I leave it too long, you know, it's it's terrible trying to get it shaved up. So mm -hmm. I got to trim it down several times before I start taking a razor to it. Yeah, yeah, I've seen, I've seen. Yeah. Tear my face up. Mm -hmm. 
I've tried to grow a beard and I can grow a good beard, but it just irritates my skin so bad. I, I, I can't too. stand it after a while. And I've tried those moisturizers and stuff, but I don't know. You got sensitive skin. I do, yeah. Mm -hmm. do you know you have I got razor burn right now. Yeah, it doesn't matter what kind of lotion or stuff I put on my face when I do a beard. It's mine. Mine does the same way. It just, it's just, I don't know. Skin's too sensitive. And it never used to be like that though. It wasn't until I got in my late 20s, early 30s that it was like that. So, Is that right? Yeah. You're, you get young and you're, you're blessed with nice skin and you know, mm -hmm. you can do anything you want to do and you start getting up in age and you're like, well, maybe not so much. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, when you're young, you try anything. Exactly. You know, watch anyhow. You try it. At least you try it once. You yeah, know. your body will just rebound. It's mm -hmm. fine. But mm -hmm. hey, just be thankful you still got hair. I didn't, I didn't think that, you know, even in my thirties that I'd be, I wouldn't say I'm, you know, decrepit. I, I got in a really bad accident when I was uh, 15. Oh, is that right? Yeah, I was bed bound for about three months. Oh, God, you did get hurt. Yeah, so I, I couldn't even walk for, for three months. Mm -hmm. um, but, but yeah, I get, you get in your 30s and you say, oh, okay, it's not going to be so bad, right? And you wake up and you're sore from just sleeping and you're like, oh, mm -hmm. my gosh. <laughs> Yeah. Boy, don't that feel good. I, I can fit. I'm feeling for you now. I'm feeling for you. Yeah, it'd been almost, what, seven months since yeah. I got my haircut. Is so. that right? Yeah, about seven months. Yep. All right, let me brush you back there and we'll lay you back there and give you a shake. All right. You got double chins over here. He charges extra. He charges extra if he shaves both of them now. <laughs> I can't stand the dentist. I I have to get that gas, the nitrous gas, when I go to the dentist. If I have to get a cavity filled or a crown put in or anything, I can't stand it. Uh, that's why my wife is. She's saying, what? She, uh, she, just, she, she just had three teeth on the bottom pull. Mm -hmm. And Dang, she told them, she hard. said, I want you to put me to sleep. So they did. Yeah, that's tough. I had to have all four of my wisdom teeth removed, so. Mm -hmm. I've got a jaw tooth. I had a jaw tooth on the lower lower mm -hmm. jaw on the left side, and I, the jaw tooth itself had a cavity, and that's why mm -hmm. I was in Vietnam, and I, I went to the infirmary and uh, told them that this is my lower jaw tooth on the left side it had a cavity. I'm getting, well, he had the X-ray, and he told me he says I can't I can't feel that tooth. He said, what you got? He said, you've got a wisdom tooth. And he said, I've been in the, uh, you know, the dentist a good while now. And he said, uh, that wisdom tooth, instead of growing up like it should, it's growing this way. I had and pushing like the that. jaw. Did you? Yeah. I've got one doing the same thing on this side, but my, my tooth, my tooth ain't giving no problems, you know. Yeah, my right one had a cavity on it just like that. And it was, that's that's when they said, hey, you're going to have to get them all over Yeah, me. yeah, he, he took him. Yeah, he gave me about, he, he gave me about, uh, Oh, I guess six shots or something like that. The three on each side and give it time to, it, oh, it was dead. It was dead. Yeah. And he had his nurse. Now, he, he put, he, uh, he, he had to pull the jaw tooth before he could do anything with the wisdom tooth. So he had his nurse to put her hand under oh, my chin. Oh, gosh. And he took a chisel and a hammer. And uh -huh. he, oh, he hit that thing twice and split it. Nope. And, yeah. And then, he, of course, I didn't feel anything. Yeah. I had about six shots in it on the three on each side. Yeah. I didn't feel anything. You talk about... I, I was, 
I was telling my wife about that. She said, I've heard, I don't hear no more of it. <laughs> I, hear more of it. I said, yeah, I said, his nurse there, she up uh, his assistant. She put her hand on him a chin and held it on while he, he hit it with the chisel. Hey. You he talk about twice. talk about getting out of the chair and running. That'd be me. <laughs> I'd be running. You'd have been running? Yes, sir. I had to put him down. Yeah, it seems like no matter how many shots they give me, I can always feel when they're drilling. And I hate the sound, just the sound of the drill. Yeah. You yeah. can't stand it. How long has this building been here? Well, the barber shop itself, I don't really know. I think this part, this part from here to that corner there on the left side here, on my left, that part has been added to it. Okay. But I've been, I, the, the barber shop itself has been here about 67 years, something like that. Wow. You've been cutting hair that whole time? Not in here, I have. I've got, I've got about, uh, I think I've got about 54, 55 years in barber. I started full-time barber when I was uh, 17, I believe it was. So when you came back from service, you did that too? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I went back to it after I came out of service. Yeah, I came over here in June of 60, June of 2nd, 69. I just had, I just had an anniversary here. <laughs> Congratulations. Well, thank you, sir. It's about to stop raining. Pardon? It looks like it's about to stop raining out there. Yeah. Yeah, it's still, it's still misting down a little bit, but it, it's about to stop. Well, they said it would slow down. We'll get some pretty heavy shower this morning and then light, lighten up. I think some more heavy stuff's supposed to be coming through this afternoon. Mm -hmm.
I got my feet wet this morning. I can't stand having wet socks. I hate it. I can't stand it. You look like a new man. Yeah, I feel like it. <laughs> it's like a weight's been lifted off. Yeah, yeah. And when I go back to work, my office stays so cold. Mm-hmm. Put the hat on. Don't jump out of a chair. <laughs> don't run even us though, over. Even though you feel like it, don't jump out of it. Don't run us over if you do jump there out of it. There you go. There you go. Now this is a good part. Now that feels like yeah, an iceberg. Is, yeah. It's good after shade. It, it's good. Is that the stuff up here? The yeah, sure. Uh -huh. Blue spice. Mm -hmm. You could take you some home, Ryan. Do it every day. The is the name of it, yeah. My salesman told me, he said, it's actually, he said it's the same thing. Is Aqua Velva. This company bought them out, but they couldn't use their trade name, you know. Uh, so yeah. then he said it's the very same thing as Aqua Velva. You said 54 oh, years you've been doing this? Uh, yeah, I've been 54 years right here. I've been in about 56. Yeah, about 56. Mm -hmm. That's good. You don't find many people that still have a passion for things that they've, you know, done for a long time. Yeah, exactly. Long time. Everything now is just, you know. I, I get a. Uh, Around town magazine, once a while, they had showed pictures. I believe it was that, I believe it was that picture of one just very bad. Where this man was still cutting hair, and he's 90 years old, and he lost his wife, you know, his kids, you know, what places. He said, I had read, he was cutting his hair at 90 years old. He said, I'd rather be doing this. I've got customers, I've been cutting hair for 40 or 50 years. We talk, you know, just. It, it's something for me to do instead of just sitting around the house, you know. Yeah, my granddad. So he, yeah, yeah, he had a good point there. My yeah. granddad was uh, he was 15 when he went to the coal mines, and he worked up until about about 15 years ago. And yeah. once he retired, uh -huh. you can just tell it it just it just kills him on the inside. Oh, yeah. you know, he mm -hmm. he had a lot of health problems, especially with his hips. Yeah, he had to he had to stop. Um, but ever since he's been retired, he, I'm like, you gotta find your hobby or something. Let me show it to you. Let me show it to you. Let me show it Yep, well, it's, it's going actually going to go. It's different. It's definitely different, ain't it? <laughs> yeah, and grow back. It's fine. Oh, yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. That's, that's like a military cut. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's, well, you know, most people, they don't, when they do cut it, they don't get it even, and sometimes it's splotchy and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. You do a good job. Well, thank you, Appreciate sir. it. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah, right there. Okay. I appreciate your hospitality. Yes, sir. But I'm going to make this man pay. <laughs> All right. Well, he don't have to pay it. I, I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> you can, how about 120 Just, 120, just, just yeah. for okay. busting. All right. Sake. All right. <laughs>